Hi guys, welcome to Carousel Kids and uh, thank you for being here. This is going to be uh, a care collab video about the striking Epiketlea Rene Marques. And in my case, it's going to be the variation flamethrower, which I personally think is the loveliest one of them all. And even this time, it's going to be a few other participating channels, of course. So I'm going to make links in the description box below. This um, Epic Atlea, Rene Marquez, and in my case, Flamethrower, is a gorgeous one. And it's a multi-flowered Meristem hybrid cross between the species Epidendrum, Sevt Epidendrum, and Cattleya Clausiana, uh, which is, on the other hand, a uh, primary hybrid cross Cattleya between Cattleya Intermedia and Cattleya Lodigesiae. So, with that said, I'm going to show you my Rene Marquez flamethrower. Da, 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 da. Where is she? Yeah, the flamethrower Renee Marques. <laughs> She's down there. Can you see her? No. If you're not familiar with the um, hybrid cross, you wouldn't know. Yeah, they look all the same, don't they? The ones I got on the lower shelf here in my stand. And there's a lot of orchids. Of course, I love orchids, that's why. And I keep them in, shall we say, sets. These guys, I know what they're up to. This one is also a um, singular orchid. ETT, Go Coast Fireworks. It's also got epidendrum in it. So, But this one is a um, purchase from Wickman Orchidine in Germany in uh, the end of May. 2021 so it's a quite recent purchase and um, it had one year to blooming size but I had bad roots but a few new lovely roots coming so I yeah that gave me an excellent opportunity to transition this one or shall we say pop this one up immediately into semi hydroponics without disturbing any old roots at all only new roots coming and um, yeah that's the very best moment for you to transition an orchid of course into semi-hydroponics and yeah it's sitting there the water reservoir is down there a little bit of uh yeah water and the hose where the water pours out from and that on a tray of course like all the rest i just use my watering can and pour some water through it and as you can see it's got a widely spread root system. It's a really good grower. And I don't expect this one to bloom. Even though its new growth is so gorgeous. It's taller than the previous one. It's a good one. It's a really good growth. <laughs> yeah. My dog is coming, so I'll have to just uh, take a little break here. <laughs> well, it doesn't receive all that much light. Um, I had this variety before. A um, mature one from Swarta, and it bloomed during the autumn. Uh, it had, um, shall we say, multi-flower stems. It really did. And that one was a yeah, much larger one than this one, of course. It was really mature. And um, yeah, it bloomed for a couple of weeks. After time, she even created a couple of more ones. So uh, she continuously bloomed for a while, about three weeks. And she wasn't scented, so this one is not scented. This cross is um, registered in 1979. So, well, it's, yeah, it's getting there <laughs> to being a quite old cross. Over 40 years old, so nowadays I believe that's what you call old 
Yeah. Regarding an orchid registration. Yeah, what else? This one is a thirsty one. She drinks a lot. And this one, yeah, it's just recently matured. So it's new growth here I'm talking about. And yeah, the old growth here is producing a weak one. Yeah, this one doesn't come from the huge one. So this one is even a bit dry, but it's not wobbly and soft or brittle or anything. So maybe this one will continuously grow. But well, well, I don't think there's going to be anything good out of this one. But uh, yeah, and there's definitely not going to be any blooms from this cane, even though it's kind of sort of a good one. But it tells me that it's really doing fine in here. And it likes its damp with light. It likes its, its humidity of 55% humidity. But it's kind of sort of okay. But what it, this one does not like is too much sunlight. Losing its root system, being reported at the wrong time, at wrong season, without any new roots coming. So you should be really, really, really careful and choose the right moment to report it. That's why I lost the old one, the huge one I got before. This one is going to, yeah, it's going to be a good grower. As you can see, its latest growth has been a lot better than its previous one. So, I'm expecting blooms out of this one. Yeah, perhaps next fall. In six months or so. This one can bloom any time of the year. So, And of course, I fertilize it when in active growth. And when it's not um, reducing the fertilizer, of course. Or even um, just flush it every once in a while. But I'm not giving this one a proper winter rest. It should be given a proper winter rest by now but as being a um, hybrid cross I don't think it needs it so I will continuously water this guy and fertilize a little bit less when not in active growth so uh, well there's really not much else to say about this one except for that it's a thirsty guy needs a lot of fertilizer shouldn't be provided all that much light. This amount of light is sufficient enough for this one. And bear in mind that you need to wait for some new roots before you report it. And bark media may work, I don't know, but um, I believe that this one needs a little bit more moisture retaining media to thrive otherwise you will have to water it far too often for your liking i believe so let's move over to his parents so up here on the shelf in my window is the lovely parent of the epicatlea rene marquez flamethrower yeah it's a slim orchid tall and slim put into the shade really and why is that so? Well, I will bring him down to you and tell you why. You can see, this is the um, seed parent. The one that the Marques flamethrower inherited most from. Yeah, and this species from Costa Rica and Panama was found and described by Heinrich Gustav Reichenbach in 1856. It's a species and it grows in lowland forests. And it's uh, nowadays it's quite rare due to nature destruction and it can grow about one meter high. And I will demonstrate it for you. Yeah. From the base, the orchid, to the top, it is about 54, 53 centimeters. Yeah. So imagine this guy twice size, twice the height. Yeah. And I was amazed and really surprised when I unboxed it. 
from uh, Rulke in May 2021, last year. And um, that one had run roots and a few new roots coming. Yeah, I took a chance and transitioned the species orchid here, the parent of the uh, Rene case into semi up. <laughs> Why not? Semi-hydroponic. And you can see a little bit of algae there. Not so great, but I'm not going to disturb this guy for a while. But yeah, it's got quite long roots by now, down to the bottom of the pot. Yeah, a cluster of roots here. So, And uh, the thing is, well, not an abundance of roots, but uh, a few. And they are drinking. Man, are they drinking. They're drinking as much as me having to fill up the water reservoir all the way to the top every other day. So it's a heavy drinker and you can see the markings to the edges, to, uh, to the tips of the uh, leaves here. I cut the, uh, the leaf tips away. They look nasty and I wouldn't want to, yeah, wouldn't want to have black leaf tips, but I, I cut them away and well, that has not happened to the newest growth, and that one is growing tremendously well. And it grew on in my care, so it's, uh, well, I'm doing yeah, a few things right, wise from experience, as my old one, the short one I had, died off due to lack of roots and reporting at the wrong kind of season. So, now this one is gonna last, I believe since it's reported into semi-hydroponics and I won't have to get it out of the pot and report it for a while. And um, what else? This was blooms can look like, uh, yeah, can be really really similar to the Rene Marquez flamethrower or they can be beautifully greenish colored to the petals and a gorgeous, gorgeous orange lip with a striking pink to the center. So you may ask yourself, what's the difference? But this one's lip is uh, is orange, and uh, the flamethrower is yellow. So that's the difference. And this one is slightly centered, but the cross isn't. And I must say that I love these kinds of orchids, and I mostly like. The epidendrum, sept epidendrum, yeah. I prefer this one in front of Rene Marquis. I don't tell anybody, all right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, well, this one can give you about three to five blooms. And it can bloom, yeah, uh, quite small sized. My own one was about 15 centimeters tall, so that's about um, six inches where a little bloom popped up during winter time and a flamethrower blooms bloomed for me early autumn, late summer, early fall. So be careful with the sunlight and when you report it and provide a yeah quite good humidity. If you lose the roots at any point, you will need to keep the orchid in a humid, really humid place, okay? So it will get a chance to create some new roots. It will take a while. So be careful and not to lose the root system at all. And you will have a companion for some time ahead. But well guys, enough talk, and um, jump over to the other channels if you didn't already do so. Links in the description, of course. And talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye guys!